Hey guys, this is Daniel Hood with uh, tutorial number two on how to make a professional mix CD with Ableton the easy way. Um, and I told you guys uh, about the options preferences, uh, how I said uh, auto warp long samples, how we click that to off. Well, if you click it to on and then you try to warp a sample, it's going to Put, it's going to load in your uh, track and then put a whole bunch of warp markers where the computer thinks the warp markers should go. See, watch after this is done. Alright, it didn't put a lot of warp markers in there for some reason, but a lot of the time it does. And then you'd have to go in and delete each marker, and that really sucks. So just make sure you go to preferences and click auto warp long samples to off. Alright? And in, a, in the previous video, I went ahead and uh, said I was going to warp um, the rest of the tracks, 1, 2, and 3. I figured out that this uh, track right here is 128 BPM, so I just went and made one project marker at the beginning, zoomed out, and zoomed back in to the last project marker. And then I went even closer and made sure that that marker was on beat 88, 188 at the last part of the track. So now that we have like our tracks together, we want to put them together into one CD. Alright, so in order to get to our arrangement view from Ableton, you press tab or you click at the top right hand corner right here. So I'm just going to press tab or you can click right here and that brings you to your, your arrangement view. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to my uh, other view, whatever it's called, session view. I'm going to right click and then cut that, and then go back to my arrangement view, and then see how it says audio one right here? That's the same thing as audio one in your session view, our left turntable that we're going to, that's what we're going to call it or fake turntable. Okay, and then we're gonna right click and paste it. Okay, and then uh, you can even just drag in your tracks right here, double click right there, and then warp it from there if you think it's off. Okay, and then we're gonna want our track, their second track to be on the second turntable because we're bringing it in uh, with it playing. We're gonna cut that, go into uh, Ableton is set up so this is like when you zoom in it always goes like from here to here CS is 1, 9 it's counting the measures alright so from there to there is 16 measures so as long as we put our track on one of these it's gonna be like on the eight, uh, one of the measures that is divisible by 8 because you may know that uh, in techno songs, every eight measures, there's a huge breakdown and everybody goes crazy. So we want to bring in our CD when that breakdown comes so you can make everybody go crazy and make people think you're a DJ. That's really good, turntables, but we're just really good at computers, so we're going to do it on a computer. All right, so let's go back into our session view and grab track number two, cut, cut it, right click and cut it, and then uh, you can right click and paste or press control V at the same time. Okay, and that pastes it, and then you can click that arrow, and then uh, we can play it. Like, you see how it says that speaker thing right there? That's just saying we want to play right there. Okay, and no sound comes through because you have to click this thing up here that switches the audio from analyzing the session view to analyzing the arrangement view. So click the red button and now play the arrangement view. Okay. And now we're getting to the 161st measure. It's going to bring in Rock the Cosmo. Uh But in our session view, we have to turn the audio on. Alright, now it's playing Casba with that. But it, you can't really notice the change in it, can you? So maybe we probably like want, you see this bar right here? That's a track volume coming from the mixer. And um, 
we're gonna want this to go down while this is going up. So we're just gonna double click a marker on 161 where we want it to start descending and that will automate the volume. Now we're, all we're hearing is basically Casba and we're gonna want this maybe to put one right there and make it like uh, zero volume to full volume and this is from full volume to zero volume and I capped it like I don't know whatever you want that's negative 4 dB 0 dB will be the original but I toned it down a bit because these tracks are really loud and you want our tracks to be like in the middle then master at the end when you're exporting it all right so we're just gonna click over here and see how that sounds it's not really tricky automation we're just automating the volume right now what we want to do is probably automate uh, the low mids and highs so in order to do that uh, I'm gonna show you guys but I'm just gonna see how this sounds it's not a dramatic change right when it gets into the middle right there I'm just gonna put this in right here and you can double click on your audio right here and uh, change this and if you change that it will give you the bar for that so you click on it it gives you the bar alright and we're just going to set that at zero so we can change the volume of our low frequencies and you can click on high to change the mid frequencies see when I click on this and it gives me that red bar and I move it down it moves it down and if I double click on a part right there I can set a marker and have that go down so if I play right here uh, at, uh, if I play at measure 161 you can see that this is descending slowly right here to negative infinity and if we play right here it will that's just automating that's how you automate things so you just can uh, divvy up your tracks and make sure they're warped to the main tempo of Ableton and get them all organized first and once they sound good and they're just like pristinely warped you can go ahead and put them together the geeky way and divvy up your automation and to do your automation like you don't you can record the automation like you press record up here go into your session view make sure there are no buttons here that say record make sure they're not set to record and uh, you can play right here and uh, it will record this up oh sorry you gotta press record and then uh, start recording the automation see when I move this up and down I'm gonna zoom in it will record it for you so if you have like a sweet MIDI controller you can just look at this screen and then divvy up the low, mid, and high and it will record it for you. So this kind of shows how Ableton allows you to cheat and look like a professional DJ who knows turntablism really well, uh, look useless. So I just wanted to show you guys this because I got a lot of questions and like how do you warp songs and like make them together like put them together it's really easy guys and if you're gonna make a mix CD you probably wanna just do it this way because I wanna hear a badass mix CD I don't wanna hear any bull crap like um, you know n not these two songs not sounding good together just because like the DJ was drunk like I wanna hear some good music <laughs> and I don't really care like about DJ saying, oh, you're not a good DJ because you don't know how to spin turntables. Well, let's look at the definition of a disc jockey, okay? Isn't a disc jockey supposed to, like, just play songs and just play good songs? I mean, it's all about the music, right? It's not all about the skill of the DJ. I mean, the DJ didn't make these songs. He's just playing the songs. So, I think we should get over that and just move into the digital age. 
dump those turntables and just leave that for live stuff. Um, <laughs> but that's not going to happen because everybody who owns vinyl records and lives in the prehistoric era will always love their vinyl. So, oh well. <laughs> Alright, so once you guys have that all set up and you got it all automated, you can go to file, uh, say, or export audio video and export it as a WAV because that's all you, and then uh, take the WAV and then export it to an MP3 with another external program. I like to use, uh, you're going to have to find one, you can't really find a free one. Maybe Audacity has something like that, but you want to make sure you get a coder that codes it to 320 kilobits per second um, because that's high quality sound, MP3 sound, and make sure it sounds good after it's done. And if you want some automation in your master, you can just, uh, like, say you want the tempo, you can click on Mixer and Song Tempo. If you want to slow it down, you can put in some automation right there and that will slow it down to like zero but we're just gonna make this all the same throughout and I want to show you guys the spectrum analyzer you can use you can play songs and then it gives you your like this is your low frequencies this is your high frequencies um, so we can double click on here turn up our low and then go to our master and see that change so if if you find that your frequencies are all over the place and they're all like like it's a steady line all the way throughout, it probably sounds crappy and you don't want any high frequencies that are above 15,000 because you can't really hear that unless it's necessary and goes good with the song. So maybe you just want to open up a book and look at frequencies and see what that has to do with audio. And then you can double click on here and see it all big. and depending on what frequency you're on, uh, depends on which note you're playing, and you'll find if you like someone sings a note, you'll probably see that their vocal box plays one frequency, but it also plays another frequency. So that's something to think about. Um, so when you're automating this, you can like check down here to make sure everything's not too crazy. Like if you get this middle one and it's up pretty high from about 300 to 2000 kilohertz, 2000 hertz. Generally, you don't want those to be too high because uh, I don't know why. It's just good songs have have a frequency that is around there, around that kind of frequency. But um, yeah, so that's how you put a CD together and export it. Um, if you guys have any questions on this, just comment. And if you want to bitch about how this is a, a fake, a way to be a fake DJ, um, bring it on. And I'm going to start hunting down DJs that you like and tell them that they make mixed CDs with Ableton. Alright, see you guys. <laughs>